What's up everybody? This is Jeff Renard with Solve Systems and today we're going to go over the Azure OpenAI Services Completions Endpoint in Microsoft Logic Apps. It's a new action that was released some number of months ago that allows you to interact with Azure OpenAI Services very easily. So we can think about this in that we want to build, say, a RAG app, which we'll cover in future videos, is what we're kind of building up to right now. So we're going to show each component individually, and this video is specifically for the completions endpoint. So follow along, and if you need some help with developing your serverless stack or anything on the Microsoft Azure platform, please reach out to us. We'd love to help you. Also, like and subscribe for notifications for future videos. Let's go. We're going to start in a test resource group within Microsoft Azure. We have two tabs open for sake of navigating between them. And so we're going to start here. What we're going to do is go to the marketplace and get Azure OpenAI services. So we look up this. This is what the logo looks like. Okay. And then we're going to create Azure OpenAI service. We'll give it this test RG group. East zone's fine. Test, test OAI, completions. Okay, and then we'll give it the standard pricing tier, and then we'll hit next. We'll keep that the same, keep this the same. It'll validate it, and then we'll get it started. So this is submitting the deployment right now. While that's submitting, We'll then go and create a logic app. As mentioned in a previous video, these Azure OpenAI actions only work with the standard tier of logic apps. So we'll just leave it as is on the workflow service plan and in single tenant. Press select, and then we give it a name. And then we'll give it the East Zone as well. So we just named it Test Azure Completions. Leave all of this stuff enabled or uh, disabled. You might want to enable it on your workflows if you have other requirements. But for us, this works. Create, validate, submitting for deployment. We're going to navigate back to our test RG. And then we'll see test OpenAI completions is set up. So one weird quirk, which we talked about in the embeddings video, is that this launches Azure AI Foundry, which you can use the API calls in there, uh, and the keys or the API endpoints and keys, but it's not really going to do anything because we don't have anything set up to work with that. So in other words, the keys that we will use from here are for the rest endpoints and the actual Azure AI service is going to be used through that first panel that we just looked at, but we'll go do something right now, which will facilitate in getting our deployments. So we go to deployments, deploy model, and we have a bunch of models to choose from. We're just going to choose 4.0. And again, you want to check the costs for all these things when you're running serverless. We'll just give it that deployment, deploy, and then we'll see that we have a name here. So great, we have that set up. We're going to go back to our Azure OpenAI service, and we're going to get a few things. So we're going to go here to the develop tab, scroll down, and get the test endpoint, right? Or whatever your endpoint is going to be named at that point. So we go to our Logic App resource. So just going back, simple navigation, test RG group. Azure completions. Then we go to our workflows. Then we add, and this will give us the ability to add an app. Test completions, stateful, and create. We can refresh here, and we see our workflow. So we click on it, go to designer. You also have a code view. And then we'll give it a request. So this is going to generate a webhook URL that we could then send requests to. We're going to add a completion action. 
And then we'll say git chat completions. Test completions. And then we'll go with URL and key based authentication. From that panel that we copied the URL from for the endpoint, we'll see that we have this here. We'll give it the API key. So we'll go back, get the API key. Navigate back to the connector. Then we'll authenticate it. So here we see that we're good to go. We can just quickly go here and get the name. So we'll go back to our deployment within Azure AI Foundry, give it the deployment name. And then this is where the magic starts happening. We add in our messages. So you need a user or a system message. And then we'll just say who uh, you are a helpful assistant. Okay, and then we'll give it another role. So this is what your role would be interfacing with the LLM. And we'll say, who am I? Who are, who are you, rather? Say, who are you? And then we'll give it a response back to the webhook. And then we'll include this message body in there. All right, so simple, we created a webhook. We'll save this so that it generates the actual webhook here. It generates after a few seconds of saving. We can restrict our methods here. We're not gonna do that. So we have our uh, webhook request URL. Then it's going to come in with the system message, and then it's going to respond to the webhook with a message, right? So quickly in Postman, we will add this in here, and then we'll send it. Then we can see right here, we get a response back from the LLM, creating the loop basically to feed into logic apps, then back out. So you can connect this to something like a front end. Um, you can feed in a lot more things to be able to conditionally access information, which we're going to go over in future videos, how to build a complete rag app, simple rag app with uh, logic apps. So I hope this was helpful. I, I enjoy breaking down these workflows. If you have any ideas of other things you want to see done, some complicated you know, logic that you want to see set up with logic apps. We can build highly complex logic apps that can be serverless and or reserve based capacity to suit your needs. Please reach out if you need any dev help and also don't forget to like and subscribe so that you can get more of our videos in the future. Great talking to you. Have a good day.